Hello there, my name is Jack Outway. Welcome to episode three of Audio Jack. Today I am joined by my illustrious guest, uh, Aiden Pottingha. Say hello, Aiden. Hello, but first thing, my name is pronounced Pottingha. Pottingha. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> okay, um, have, okay, so I wanted to start off by talking about movies I watched recently. Do you have, had, do you have any movies you watched recently? No. No? I've watched a movie recently called Ocean's 8. There's a whole, like, series of heist movies, like Ocean's 11, Ocean's 12. You heard? Have you heard of those movies? No. I actually watched The Purge. Oh, The Purge. I binged watched it. You keep talking about it, so I bet you, you have watched it. What do you think about The Purge? Do you like The Purge or not? The Purge has... It's one of the, like, misguided movies mm. where they have right intentions. Right. But the, and the method, which they... Do. Method? Yeah. yeah. Like, so you have a good goal, but the method which they do it yeah. is inhumane or inhumane, incorrect. Right. So, like, they just wanted to put all of humans' anger in America in one day. Mm. And for 12 hours. Right. And in a way, it's just Armageddon. Armage- Armageddon. My pronunciation is wrong. Sorry. Right. I think so, the purge is inefficient, though. Like, why would you? Why would you do that? Why would you need to have a purge? Well, you could just like no. nuke a city or gas the prisons or. One of the main no, it's not the purge is not mainly about killing, right? It's about releasing your anger, and for most people, releasing anger is killing. And knowing that your hand doing it, mm. it, it it quells that anger. Whereas if you just know, oh, Johnny died. I'm still pissed about it. It still makes you angry. And way it will eventually lead up to you committing crimes outside of the perch. And I say that doing it by yourself. So there's no other crime. It's just like, that's the whole like point of it. It's not for like reducing population, although that is like a side effect. But it's, it's a side effect. It's mainly for making people, like a, making people release their anger on one day so they don't take it out on yeah. other people, like, criminally. But, I mean, you're still committing the crimes. You're just doing it on but a day. But in, in, in a way, it's legally allowed to commit crimes on that 12 hours. But when you're committing a crime, you don't think about whether it's legal or not. That's the whole point of crime. It's not legal. You know? And that's why it's a, like you get a lot of money from it, because not everybody does it. And if you all did it on one day... Then, like, wouldn't there be industries built around, like, making sure, like, oh, uh, we get a hundred percent discount on this day because we please don't murder us or something like, like, people would be capitalizing on the fact that one day a year, so they'd have like, like, oh, Google's doing their yearly hitman service where we can hire them and they'll they'll take that person right out for you, you know, like, and that only really works in America because no, like, nowhere else you're gonna get guns or something, nowhere. Well, I mean, maybe other countries, but that's sure, yeah. you crim- criminally obtain those guns, right? But then in America, you'd have to do that whole process, or you wouldn't have to do that whole process in one day. But I just feel like the purge is inefficient, and it like it's a strange idea, it's a strange concept. Like for venting anger, what I personally think would be better is if like people didn't actually kill each other, but sort of like is the sort of idea of like a gun range nowadays, or like a place, or like a a blow up punching bag you know oh that brings me to okay in taiwan there's this thing called experience week there's taiwan i went to taiwan last year and we were in this shopping mall because we went to get pizza hut the only time we had any sort of american type food (laughs) but which is kind of disappointing because it's a bad experience and other things but whatever it was good pizza for pizza hut because it was a proper restaurant rather than delivery um and it was a part of this mall. So we go, like, we have, like, ten minutes to go around this mall and buy something with, like, the money you have, you mon- the money you brought to Taiwan. Yeah. And so the only thing I purchased was this blow-up punching bag of this dude. They went, and he had, like, two <laughs> just, in front of him. Why would you do that? Like, because it's, it was awesome. It was awesome, and you... And then, like, you probably were punching him at home, right? Or Yeah, no, we got back to the hotel. Like, we immediately, like, how do we do this? Like, we, like... Down, like we filled them up with water we got everything done we like we spent the entire night rather than doing a reflection that we were supposed to each night we just like spent it like trying to figure out how we would blow up this punching doll and so we finally do it and then we're just like hammering it like constantly and like we've gotten to a point where we can like punch it from bed to bed which is like sort of like punching bag tennis if you will yeah. and then like the other boys come in and it's like are we doing poker tonight and we're like uh-uh no poker. This tonight we're doing the punching doll, and so we all just like go around punching this thing, and it's it's a good way to vent anger. I'm gonna be real with you. I felt very vented, vented, 
Okay, so that's all right. But it uh, popped like immediately, like like did, thirty minutes or like fifteen minutes in to us punching did, around did with it. It burst. All, did he get water all? No, he didn't. It popped near the top, which is a good thing. Oh, but so his face was just like a <laughs> like it completely def- like flat like flattened, and it looked like oh, that was like a little bit scary when it deflated. Like speaking of experience week, experience I, week. Yeah, I unfortunately cannot go out of the country. You can't. Why can't you go out of the country? Because I'm getting my British passport, right? Right. And they need confirmation that I'm not, like, some fake troll trying to get an illegal passport. Right. Like, illegal. I'm, an, I'm a legal person getting a legal passport. You're not an alien. Yeah, I'm not an alien. <laughs> or I have... Or just proof that I am who I actually am. Exactly. Aiden so... Potting. Yeah. Yeah. So, I am traveling on... Um, in December, right? And the process should take up to four, uh, four months. Mm-hmm. And experience week So you're going to have to do Hong Kong. Yeah. Oh, my God, Aiden. So, I feel so bad for I you. I wanted to do Taiwan, but then I realized. So first, I wanted to do Taiwan, right? Right. And so I was, yay, Taiwan, I really want to do that. Can we see, can we wriggle it around? Wriggle it around. Yeah, like, see if I don't have to do the passport, right? Okay. Do you have any other passport? No. You have no passport? I have the Dutch passport. Can you use the Dutch no, passport No, but the thing is, the Dutch passport have to give it to the British embassy. Oh, my So that they, 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 can con- <laughs> they can confirm. How long does it take to confirm? Can they do, like, an online thing? Well, or you, like, the thing is, we have, I guess not. we have a little prank, because it said six, four months, right? Right. But my parents don't feel... Right for me at my age to go out of country. Okay, so they're kind of like riding no. off of the fact that yeah. they get this. However, they bribed me, right? They bribed you. But so it- we have the ability to have it like within four weeks because we just have to give them like the right. Copy. And so what we're planning is just to do like three days of experience week in Hong Kong and okay. call sick. Oh, that's your. You've said that now, and so, like, maybe, like, a teacher will hear you, and they'll be like, oh, now they know you're going to play sick. Aiden, what have you done? You ruined it. <laughs> well, I don't think that's, like, a problem. No, nobody listens to this except my dad. Hi, dad. I love you. Are you sure? Yeah, my dad loves me. Is that, no, that's not you're asking. He listens to this, yeah. Um, only him? No, not only him. I've, I've seen other people. Like, the other day, I posted episode two with Sarah. Yeah. And, like, I got, like, five views in the first two minutes. Like, I'm not joking. Okay, but, well... It's, like, you see the activity in the channel? It's just, like, zero, 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 five. And it's, like, this massive spike of wait, five wait, wait. people. What? I'm just thinking, wait. Oh, no, that was the plan before, and then the British government said, like... No. Oh, yeah, that was the plan before, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so, glad we so, can very fast. So, it first was, like, at, well, as soon as we got it, we were like, Taiwan, and then we're like, oh, Taiwan's in, like, the southern part, not Taipei. Mm. It's like, oh. Yeah. Chiang Mai? Oh, no, I can't go. Wait a minute. I can go. Oh, wait, I can't go. And, like, at the last day, oh. the British government was like, no, no, no. Man, that's the British government. No, I'm kidding. Um, so I, I, I can't even... So yeah, my plan, my original plan, couldn't even work. That's kind of sad. Sorry. I'm not going to lie. But honestly, I think spending time in Hong Kong Everybody's is nice. going for Chiang Mai, though. Like, everybody wants Chiang Mai. That's, like, the thing this year. Last year, the thing was Saba. Saba, yeah. And, like, everybody wanted to do no, that. And there's, there's still people who want to do that, but all the people who did, no. did it last year, they can't yeah. do it again, right? Yeah. So then now they want to do Chiang Mai. Yeah, so that's the thing. It's, like, a circular motion, and then the people who did Chiang Mai... Well, there was no Chiang Mai last year. It's the first year. That, well, they're bringing it back. Yeah, but, like, Saba, right? Saba, right? They had the it last year. The only people who want to do it again are the people who missed out last year. Or the people who didn't get cut, make their cut, or yeah, maybe yeah, want exactly. to challenge themselves more, because they had experience week the first year, yeah. or maybe, like, more grade sevens. Yeah, yeah. Who haven't done experience week, they want to, like, go in strong, because, like, they've heard such good things about yeah. Saba. Personally, I feel very scared about Saba. Well, like, you're all this whole sn- s- no. snooty? Snooty hotel, snobby hotel. Because, like, Aiden lives in a hotel audience, and... Tell us about that. Tell us about your hotel living experience. What's that like? 
Well, I'm. Do you live in the hotel? Yes, yes, I do. Is it like a top floor or like is there like a? Th- it's the fifth floor. The well, fifth floor. Okay. Technically the fourth floor, but they call it the fifth floor because. Of course, yeah. Like, like I think every building in Hong Kong. And you know, it's really weird. What? In room and meeting rooms, right? Right. Uh, four right? is not a problem if you're like room four. Right. However, room seven is unlucky. That's weird. Exactly, like, it's just random. Like, like four is understandable. I wouldn't it's say like it's so, random. I'm sure no, there's some... There's some meaning, but... Can just, like, one number be unlucky at the very least? Almost. Yeah, I mean, it's like consistency is a bit of a strange thing. Yeah. Uh, we can have, like, a 44th floor. I mean, we can't have 44. We can have 41, 42, 43, and then it just gets to 45. Yeah, but, exactly. like, you're allowed to have it in yeah. the 10 digits, but not in the 1 digit. In the 1 digit, uh-uh, we're skipping this, you know? Wait, what's the weird thing? What? Um, also, we don't have a 13th floor. 13th floor. No, we have a 13th, but... No, for in my hotel, I don't have a 13th floor. Yeah. But we have a 14th floor. What? So, like... I, I, guess, I guess it's an American, and they want to appeal to West. But then why would they take their four out? But then, but then they should also take the 14 out. Yeah, but then, like, it's like, oh, uh, we're going to, like, appeal to the Chinese audience, which is mainly here in this country. Oh, wait, never mind. We're going to change our mind. Now we're focused on what the Americans have to think. I mean, it's a bit strange in my opinion. I won't it is. judge you. But the owners are a bit weird. <laughs> the own- to yeah. Be, to be honest. What is it like, though? What, like, do they bring you food? Yeah, if we want to. We have a thing called Duty Meal. Duty and- Meal. So, we, I have a family of four. Right. And we can order four mains. Four mains. For me, per meal. For meal. For, okay. Like, what for if you're just days? you in the house, and like, or you in the hotel, and like you order four, and you just get four, f- yeah, like a massive... Yeah, I, I can food. do that, actually. I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's on the menu? Do you have, like, is it like simple things, or like nice cooked dishes? Well, I, I, I forgot the outlets, like... The but do they give you like a cooked meal, or like... They can give us a cooked meal. They, they're not allowed to give us ingredients. Okay. We have to buy the ingredients. You have to buy your own ingredients yeah. and then they make it for you? No. So, we have to buy our own ingredients if we want to cook at home. Okay. Do you However, have, like, a, uh, is, it, is there a kitchen in your house? Because yes. hotel rooms don't have yes. kitchens. Well, this hotel has service suites and I think each floor, from fifth floor, our floor all the way up, are service suites and they're meant in a way for guests coming in, staying for a couple of months. Okay. Then leaving would you say it's expensive do you think your hotel is expensive i'd say it's on the cheaper side of luxury hotels luxury hotels yeah have you been paid to say that what's the name of the hotel harbor grand kowloon it's the flagship hotel of the best local brand in hong kong (laughs) (laughs) it's true it's actually been done so it's Tung Kong or Harbor Plaza Groups, and it has been deemed the best local um, hotel chain. I'm glad you're doing advertising for your hotel that you live in. <laughs> Would I be, are you allowed to bring guests home? Are you allowed to bring, like, friends to the hotel? I am allowed. However, so the duty meal, right? Right. Four mains, all free. Right. And any restaurant. Right. And, um... But if I go over that four mains... You have to start paying. Half price. Half price. That's still not bad, it's man. Still not bad. That's still pretty good, and I have to say. And then they also have, like, a bakery. Right? A, a bakery? Oh. Is that, does that count price. as a main? Half price. What about, like, not mains? Do you have to pay half price for sides? No, it's in a way a meal. A meal? A, meal, a, meal, a family meal. So like, a family meal. It's in a way for us to have a decent meal. Like, it's not, Okay. So we can order, like... Could you order, like, a side of fries or, like, or you have to pay for the fries? No, we don't. Okay. It was just a meal. Okay. But in a way, just saying you can't necessarily order five mains. You can't... We, it's almost... It, if you had a family of five, would they allow you to have five? Yeah. Okay. It's just to feed the four of us only. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. Because it... Yeah. Okay. And our... Where we live is also complimentary. Free. Nice. Is it, is it big? Is it a nice, spacious space? It's spacious in Hong Kong terms. For, for Hong Kong, of course, yeah. So, we, they have two bedrooms, three toilets, That's one nice. study and one living room, and a kitchen. That's pretty nice. That's good. For Hong Kong, that's very good. For those uh, international audience viewers, uh, housing in Hong Kong. You'll cringe <laughs> so badly. You'll be like, honey, I think we need to move. <laughs> like, it's like a hundred, more than a hundred thousand every month. 
for some places. Yeah. Like it really like it 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 change it ranges there's a range, but yeah. it's all insanely expensive. Except for like cage homes. Yeah. Because the the company is trying to attract like general managers and mm. high staff because Hong Kong prices are very expensive. Right. And in a way if they let them buy their own home they, in a way, are almost entitled to give them a higher salary. Yeah. And, in a way... <laughs> yeah, and, and they don't have to give them a higher salary. And, but they don't, they, want, they don't want to, but they see that the mo- more economical way and more attractive way is to just let them just live in the hotel. Mm. Because if you're a Westerner, right, going to Hong Kong, and you buy, like, a house, or, like, the price of a house in, like, your home country, in, let's say, in America, right, and then you have a teeny apartment in Hong Kong, You'd be like, no, I want to stay in America. Right. But as much as, like, as much as Hong Kong housing is expensive, Hong Kong is a really cool place. It is really cool. How long have you been in Hong Kong? Uh, roughly two years. Two ago. years? I moved in 2016. From? Shenzhen, just across Shenzhen. the border. Hey. So I've known Hong Kong for five years. Known, yeah. I've known Hong Kong for five years. I... In a way, I've been to Hong Kong for, like, two and a half years, including all the times I sw- went over. Until, like, I think a couple months ago, I'd never been in China properly, but we crossed the border into Shenzhen. But the only time I... The only part of me that was in Shenzhen, we went to this, like, school with, like, a bunch of uh, not-so-well-off children. They had to go to every day across the border every day. And, like, they had this fence that was basically just across the border. Exactly, like... But not quite, but, like, I stuck my thumb through, and so technically my thumb was the only part of me that had been to China. I mean, SAR China is technically Hong Kong. Because Shenzhen, right, is massive. Mm. For me, every day to get to school was roughly 50 minutes. 50 or 15? 50. 50, 50, 5-0. Oh, my goodness. I live in Aberdeen. Uh, please don't find out where I live, but um, I live in Aberdeen, and so it's really close to the school, and it's easy for me to get to school, which is, I, I guess, a benefit of living in Aberdeen. Yeah, I guess. It's got, like, a lovely harbor. Uh, you know, the, there was a humanities project, which is social studies, humanities, same difference, um, where we had to do this um, We had to do this interview about something in Aberdeen and, like, learn about its history and its cultural significance to Hong Kong, right? And so I chose the Aberdeen Fish Market because, of course, yeah, I live not? across from it. So it took me <laughs> five minutes to get there. We didn't get any interviews because, like, the one lady who could speak English was, like, at the souvenir shop. And she felt like she couldn't represent the whole fish market properly, which, I, I mean, is respectable. But it's a little bit like, I mean, depending on how long you've worked here and depending on how much, yeah. like, you've interacted with people and the fact that you're selling souvenirs. I mean, hopefully she'd have some understanding yeah. of the, like, the history of the fish market or, yeah. like, the culture of the fish market. But I don't know, man. It's really about, like, coming early in the morning because if you go, like, when I wake up, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Like, nobody's there at the fish market. It's completely barren. But apparently, like, in 3 in the morning, it's, like, bustling, which is, like, crazy to me. That it's, like, three in the morning that it's the most, like, sort of significant time at the fish market. It's really weird. Like, my, where I am, I've learned a bit of history about it, is actually used to be a dockyard. Like, one of the major... Sh- dockyard or duckyard? Dockyard. Darkyard. Dockyard. Dockyard. It's like they built ships. Right. And it's also reclaimed land. Did you see the movie, um, Skyscraper? Yeah, 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 it's where the it's meant to be. I saw the trailer, but it's meant to. It symbolizes the ICC tower. I know, but it's like it looks like you showed me a map of Hong. Is ICC close to your hotel? Well, it's fifteen minute drive. Fifteen minute. That's not bad. But like, I immediately thought like, oh my god, is this Aiden's hotel that they're showing in the movie? But like glorified to be like this insane skyscraper. Mm-hmm. I realized that it well, wasn't, but I, I thought for a minute it, it might have been. It, it technically removed. Ritz. Remove the what? The Ritz Carlton. Ritz like Carlton. That's, where, that's the hotel there. Right. Um, you know, like the. In, uh, Do you know Disney the whole Ma- hotel history? So, no. Um, did you know that the IC the ICC right 
also was removed and the Stark Tower from Disney. World. Yeah, I, I, I went to the Tony Stark. It, it, it's, it's, it, they just keep removing the ICC. The ICC, yeah, because it's, it's, it's the most famous it's tall, building. What, not the most famous, well, I don't know but the it's the tallest, famous. right? Right. And also it's not that close to any tall Exactly, other it's easy to sort of Photoshop the, the, out. The IFC, right, is like in central. Right. With a lot of other tall mm. skyscrapers. Whereas the ICC just has a whole lot of low land around, and it's just right. actually right now being developed. Because like each time I go to school, well, on the way back, I go through the around the ICC, the Western mm. Tunnel. And so, in a way, for me, I get I got to see how the high speed rail to chi- from Guangzhou really developed. Yeah, and it's quite interesting because. From, like, when I came this summer, there was nothing. It was just still... Right. The bars of metal, nothing, yeah. no glass attached. And then all of a sudden, in, like, October... Right. It has its grand opening. There's, like, a thing with Hong Kong where there's, con- like, continuously construction yeah. going on all, all the time, everywhere. My dad's hotel is undergoing, was, is undergoing an expansion. Expansion. So... Is it getting higher? Yeah. Or, like, so, conjoining buildings. So, there... It's conjoining buildings, yeah. Mm. So, there's two buildings in front of us, and one build, and then the hotel in front. Our hotel right. on the, is the on the harbor, like, immediately on the harbor. Right. And so, what's going to happen is that they're expanding the two towers in front, mm. all same owners. They, like, wow. we live in a neighborhood, all owned by the same guy. This is like one dude. Li Kaxing, yeah. Li Kaxing. Uh, Chung Kong. Chung Kong. He's, a, it's the big, the richest guy in Hong Kong. The richest guy in, oh, well, there or you go. Richest guy in Hong Kong and possibly Asia. <laughs> the entirety of Asia. Yeah. Wow. Well, and I mean, that's so kind of like more, an honor. No, more than anything. Um, he has like some properties. You know Watson's, right? Uh, I and do. And Fortress. Like the, the. The pharmaceutical. Yeah. Owned by Lee Kushin. He owns both of them. The enti- both of them. Why doesn't he just make them all, like, one brand? Or, like, he could, like, give them a name, but really it's just, like... You know how, like, some, like, really big companies buy out the little stores and put, like, the name, like, of the old store to make, like, fool people into thinking that it's the original one? No, it's not that. They just bought the company. They just bought the company out, right? And, and, and it's, like, weird. Like, you all of a sudden have Watsons, right? Yeah. And then you have... Some random name. Hong Kong's like all over the place. Oh, it's yeah. like sometimes it's pretty yeah. and sometimes it's like really like yeah. ugly. You know, like you have some parts that are beautiful. Exactly. Uh, also talking about Lee Kuching, you know, Park and Shop Taste Fusion. Does he really own all of those? He owns all of that. What? I I have seen a Fusion Park and Shop, but I just yeah, that's crazy, man. Does he own like what else does he own? Do you know what exactly like who is this dude? Does he own Coca Cola? No. no, that's Swire. That's an American. No, no, that, okay. Swire? No, 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 sorry. Coca-Cola is its own brand. It is its own brand. It yeah. owns other Cafe things. Cafe is owned oh, by Swire. Cafe is owned by Cafe Pacific. Yeah. I've only, I, I've, I've sometimes flown with other companies in other countries. Like in Canada, I flew with WestJet for a while when I was getting like from different places to Canada. But in Canada, my dad and I really like doing road trips. And yeah. so we'll have, like, a seven-hour driving day with nothing but driving. Like, the, em- the empty road for, like, miles and miles or kilometers mm-hmm. and kilometers, yeah. which is trees and the two of us and our playlists. And that is sometimes some of the best bonding I've had with my father. Do you have a good relationship with your father? Because I feel yes. like like a yes, trope, yeah. like there's a cliche in every single sort of movie or book yeah. ever that, like, yeah. there's father troubles. Like, the father is, like, useless. It's abandoned them. Or he's, like, n- never there. Or he's, like, me. No, or he's my, abusive or whatever. My, and I'm like, come on. Lay off the fathers. No, because, like, my father is there, right? Right. So we talk a lot. We hang out a lot. Because you live at work. Yeah, because... But, like, he can just stop by... Exactly. You, you can, be like, hey, what's it's up? not like you know, like if your dad's working, right? And you have to wait until he comes home. No, I don't know that. My dad is an author. Yeah, uh, but, he's but a but writer, like, you, so he you, works from home as well. But like you know, like in the movies, right? Dad yeah, comes home late. Almost, but anyway, yeah. what we can almost do, right? Right. Is if he's like there at two ten o'clock, mm. our mom can storm down to his office and say, "What's going on? Why are you so late?" But he never comes. He always comes out after dinner. Good. Because it's quite relatively a relaxed 
job almost. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not like one of these jobs where you have to work a lot. Mm. You just have to manage people. Yeah. It's, he's at the top of his hierarchy. Like, I think it's sometimes nice having family members that work in, like, the entertainment industry or in, like, in as, a, like, a, a retail place because they can usually get you discounts on food yeah. or on clothing. And, like, we went um, – my cousin's father, so my step – no, not step – my um, – Uncle in law, I guess what it would yeah. be, uh, is he owns he doesn't own um, he's like a manager in this park called Callaway Park in Canada, and like every time I visit Canada and visit them, we always go to Callaway Park because like that's like an amusement park. It's got lots of rides. It's co- it's like a nice area just for doing things, and we get a discount on it because he works there. And I just have like I have memories of that place, like from when I was really yeah. young. You know? Yeah. Do you ever have like 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 really vivid memories when you were young like oh yeah like ones you completely remember like what's the youngest memory you have when i got my scar just got your scar same oh my goodness when how did you get your scar how did you get your scar so i wore um two um large sandals right okay at the age of one ish two ish this is a strange way to start a story about getting a scar, yeah. wearing sandals, right? Yeah, no, they're, me. like, too big, you know? When you okay, like, they're too large. Yeah, too I understand large that, shoes, yeah, because right? they fall, keep so, falling off your feet, and right? Well, like, I'm walking, right? Right. And then there's a stairwell in my dad's hotel. Okay. That was, like, all the way in England. The same hotel? Oh, a different hotel in, in England. England. Okay. Holiday Inn. Right. Near, at, he- at Heathrow. Right. And so I was walking, right? And then I tripped, and then I land, my forehead lands on the edge Ooh. of a stairwell, and then it's not like a normal stairwell, right? It has a metal Ugh. edge, and so my head just cuts open, Ugh. and like I was choking on my blood dripping down from my head. I have a similar experience. And then literally had to like rub off the blood and then put a towel, and he had to like change towels, because the one just got like red, and so I had to get stitches. Yeah, I have an extremely similar story, except it was within my, um, it's still in Hong Kong, I was in Hong you Kong my entire down life. Down. No, well, I jumped, yeah, okay, let me tell the story. I got one, I got one. So, um, I was three years old, what age were you? Mm, one or two. I was three oh, one years and old half. at this point. So, I'm obsessed with Ben 10. It's like a <laughs> thing for every three-year-old. Like, no, wow, not for me. 10 years old. No, well, I mean, I'm not sure if it's so big in Britain. Or or in England when no, you were but, two years old. No, but like for me, what I like, I, I refuse to go to bed unless I watch Thomas the Train Engine. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> Thomas the Thomas the Tank Engine. Yeah. So I'm like, why isn't it called Thomas the Train Engine? It doesn't make any sense why it's called Thomas the Tank Engine. I know. So like, my parents like go to sleep, and I'm like, no, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> so the captain. He's like throughout the hotel, like the yeah. manager, like Thomas. No, at that time when we live in our own home. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and then I watch. Right. And then I watch it. And I just, <laughs> I'm so worried out. And then they have to put me in the car and drive around the block to just <laughs> sleep. And then put me in my bed. I was like when I was one or two. And That's then, pretty cute. I know. Just like so. And that's sort of how I keep falling asleep. Because I'm Korea, right. right? I went to Korea. That's the trick nowadays. Yeah. If you want to make Aiden go to sleep, just put on some Thomas the Tank Engine. He'll no. be out like a moth. No, like, a moth. Because, like, I, feel, I fall asleep in the car, right? Yeah. And so I oh, okay. sort of built into me. And so now when you're in a car, you get really yeah, sleepy? Yeah, yeah, So, like, in a taxi ride, right? And we're in Korea when we're on holiday in October. We, we went in a taxi for, like, to go to a, uh, to the UN Memorial in Busan. Right. And then on the taxi ride, I just fell asleep. <laughs> and then on the way back, I fell asleep. Aiden. And then on <laughs> another ride, I think, to the train station, I fell asleep. What? How do you keep falling asleep everywhere? It's the motion of the taxi moving. And I'm just like... Do they have to keep waking you? I mean, I'll, sometimes I'll have a nap in a car, but that's only if I've had, like, a sporting activity or if I'm tired. No, I'm, I'm, but they have to wake me up when we arrive at our destination. Because like, well, <laughs> they, they don't want to, like, when they, they stop in the taxi, right? Like, you, you know the taxi Do drive. you get, does it the same thing with buses? Do you get tired on buses or just no, cars? Buses, the car seats are more comfortable than bus seats. Yeah, because you gotta Buses go, like, are smaller. It's like yeah. an air... It's like a... And it's like there's a lot of air con yeah. in buses, you know? Like, in like a yeah. car, you don't usually have an air conditioning unless it's, like, a nice car when yeah. you're in the front seat. But usually then the air con doesn't reach you when you're in the back. And you're just, like, a warm, dark space is sometimes the best place to have a nap. 
a nap, you know? Like, the leather is a very dark color, so if you just look at the leather and, like, sort of close your eyes, <laughs> yeah. like, it's so easy to drift off. And I've, I've done it countless times, but it's not built into me to a point where I just, like, <laughs> respond by being in a car by, like, falling asleep. Anyways, I'm going to get to my story about how I cracked up in my head when I was three years old. Um, I jumped off. I was obsessed with Ben 10. Yeah. And I jumped off. And I wanted to be one of the characters, right? There's this character called Cannonball. He jumps. He's a cannonball. Pretty yeah. simple. I know, creative genius at the Ben 10 <laughs> team. But I wanted to be him, okay? And I jumped off the coffee table, and I slammed my head against the, like, that's sort of like a TV sort of top where the yeah. TV rests. Boom! My head, like, my forehead, like, slammed right into it. Ooh. Uh, it's, it's in a nice place where it's not very visible. Like, yours is kind of oh, between your... She looks like a lightning bolt. It is. Well, like, mine's in the place where Harry Potter's is, but yours is more shaped like Harry Potter's. Yeah, so, but when people call me Harry Potter, I'm old school. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes when I walk into classroom, they play, like, the ear rape version of the Harry Potter theme song. Like, it's like, you hear, like, da 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 It's just, right. like, hilarious. It is pretty funny. Um, I think there's a time and place for everything. And I... Did you... Did you think it was bullying back then or were you okay with it were you just thinking like oh it's just like oh it's fun teasing you know it's all right you didn't have a problem with it no okay i remember it's funny i like being harry potter you did you have like a kindergarten you went to when you were really young oh yeah yeah good memories i only have two memories the first memory is or three memories my first memory was making bread my second memory was running around in a circle pretending to be a dolphin. And my third memory was leaving. Okay, so here are a couple of memories. Right. One memory is overcoming my fear. And right. And like play gyms, you know, when they have like right. climb ups and then there's like these. Right. And there's like, this little room where you just quickly go in and it's dark and then you come out. And right. I was like, I will go through that place. Yeah. I will. And I attempt, I'm like, <laughs> it's like that feeling when you're like about to die, like you're very anxious, like Oof. like your heart is one time pumping so hard, you're like, mm. and it was just a simple room. And other times when I got annoyed at some boy and I kind of went a little crazy. Cannibal. Cannibal? What? I went like, uh, did you bite him? Uh, Aiden, <laughs> did you bite him? <laughs> yeah. Perhaps. This is a yes or no answer. Did you bite him? Perhaps. Okay, well, I'm moving back. <laughs> he was tasty, though. What? What does that even mean? <laughs> but he could do better with some salt. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Now you've got, like, a refined palate, and it's like, mmm. <laughs> no, actually... I, is that what the hotel brings you? Yeah, that's probably why I have a good palate, because, like... Because yeah. you ate human flesh. No, because I ate... I'm so spoiled. And the other memory is me getting... Oh, there's gum under there. Yes. Another memory of me getting... Is getting embarrassed. Because there's, like, two se- se- two separate sections, right? Right. One is for, like, the really young people. Mm-hmm. And one is for the older. Right. And so they turned out... Were you still really young at that point? No, I was the old. Okay, okay. And then they were... I had some friends there. Right. And, but then... They ran out of seats. And so they <gasps> sent me to the little kids section and tried to sit there eating, like, little food. I'm like, <laughs> I don't belong here. I've been here before. I did not like the memories. Although I did like Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, there's a whole feeling of, like, being patronized to or, like, being talked down to. But you have to realize sometimes that you are still technically a child. I mean, you're a little more teenager now at this point, but 14 is when you really get into the teenager point in my perspective, but, like... I'm 13. I know, I'm also 13, Aiden. I'm the youngest. We're in the 13 club. I don't know if that's... Is that that, an insult to me or a compliment to yourself? That means I'm more innocent. So if we get in trouble... Oh, yeah, person who's been another human being. (laughs) You have to take the blame. (laughs) <laughs> like if I were to go out now and like I don't know commit a crime you have to take the blame for me okay no what I don't have to take the blame for you you're older than me you're my friend people don't know that unless like we can like physically like prove like you'd be like oh my birthday's on uh, May 2nd and like nobody has any way to prove that except for your ID passport. your passport or like any sort of identification or just by your word by being like okay your birthday is May 22nd then you know, and that's why a lot of, like, people 
are motivated to lie about their age as well this is relating back to the patronizing thing is because they want to feel more mature you know they want to feel like they have the right to do that sort of thing and not be put back in the baby room um good moment good i think it was a bad moment are you continuing to eat <laughs> your water bottle, Aiden? Oh. Okay, so Aiden's got this water bottle. That's sour. <laughs> Aiden. <laughs> Ow. Aiden's has this water bottle, right? And it's got this divider where it's got one section where you can put various fruits inside, mm. and then it sort of makes the water taste like the fruits, right? It's an interesting mechanism. I kind of like the way it looks, but uh, he's been eating fruit out of out of his water bottle the entire session and we're like Aiden you can't eat during the podcast and he's like oh it's sweet and so now he's eating more <laughs> but he's real he's realizing it's sour and he's like convulsing <laughs> but he's continuing to eat it Aiden why are you eating this why are you doing this it was the raspberry <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the title of the episode. It was the raspberry. <laughs> it was, I could do that. Yeah? Okay. That seems like a good one. It was the raspberry. It was the raspberry. <sighs> what were we talking about? Patronizing children before you started eating fruit? <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it healthy? I mean, that's an interesting debate because fruit isn't... I mean, fruit is technically healthy for it's you, but sugar. it's got sugar. It's got natural sugars in it, which is like you only can have like a certain amount of it. I feel like the food pyramid back in the day when I was being taught it was like corrupted by <laughs> yeah. capitalism yeah. because they'd have like grains at the bottom with bread. And I'd be like, no, what? The grain isn't the healthiest thing for you. If you have too much grain and too much carbohydrates, you're going to get really plump really quickly. That's why the, a baker is fat and a butcher isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the butcher's like licking, like no, well, he has to, like hack it. Stuff it's, well, yeah, it's got through those arms, you know. Where it's like the baker's like. I think the bottom of the food pyramid. I think it should be vegetables, and then followed, or like vegetables and protein. It doesn't necessarily have to be meat or red meats. It could be like beans. It could be yeah. like egg. It could be whatever, right? Anything that gives mm-hmm. you protein. But I feel like vegetables and protein are the most important things you can give to your body. Yeah. That's what I put at the bottom. Grains and dairy are like a secondary thing. They're good like, well, da- dairy below grains. Grains is sort of like, is sort of okay. Not it's, really that it's, okay. It's kind of needed. I think dairy, like people are like, oh, it gives my bones calcium. But it's like, you can get just as much, if not more calcium from broccoli and even healthier yeah. sorts, you know? But still like milk. I mean, like, that's sort of, like, I think milk is an interesting characteristic of, like, innocence, you know? But, like, milk is so weird. Like, you're fed, you're fed it at a young age. Don't you disrespect milk? Well, okay. (laughs) It's like, I've done a personal offense to you by talking bad about milk. No, but, like, milk is, in movies, it's, like, a symbol of innocence and a symbol of youth. But, like, because you drink it when you're young or you drink, like, a formula of, like, that replicates milk when you're young. But some people are, like, lactose intolerant and some people, like, don't like the taste of it and some people, like... Yeah. And some people can't, like, deal with the smell. Like, it's so strange that people would even drink milk. Like... Other than, like, through the, like, beginning process of their, like, life as a baby. Well, you know? Like milk was... Like, you can use milk and other things as an ingredient, but just someone who pours himself a glass of milk. Like, why? You just get water if you want to get hydrated. If you want something, like, sweet or something nice, get, like, a soda. If you want something carbonated or fizzy, get a soda. If you want, like, something creamy, you just eat cream. You know? Why are you getting milk? Like, actually milk. I mean, the only time I drink milk by itself is if I'm eating something spicy. Like, that is a proper way to stop spice. Uh, um, also, we, you humans, had to train our gut to eat. It's at, he, why would you bother doing so that? So we were like, mm, I want to eat this. Why would the human... We're looking for grade 9 students. No, not us. Yeah, Jasmine Yen of grade 9B. Jasmine Yen of grade 9B. If you're in the building... Wanted, dead or alive. <laughs> Jasmine Yen? Grade 9B. Jasmine Yen, you know Donnie Yen? He's a famous actor in Hong Kong. He was It Man. He was in the Star Wars movie. Yeah. Oh. She's her daughter. Do- she is his daughter. Really? Yeah, she goes to the school. Okay. No, I'm not kidding me. I'm not kidding you. I was in a musical with her in grade five or something. That was, yeah, that's crazy. He, no, sometimes wait, he comes wait, to the school and he gives autographs to students. It's really interesting. Which Star Wars? Uh, the uh, Rogue One. He was the blind dude. The blind dude. Really? Yeah. 
Wait, so, wait, so... He's really famous in Hong Kong. So now I can meet him. Well, I mean, it's very circumstantial well, when he comes I, to if the I, school. if I become friends with him. With her? Yeah. I mean, good luck. I mean, people, like, I'm sure she's used to it at this point, but, like, having friends become with her only the, so they can reach her father. So, good luck, Aiden. <laughs> oh, back and forth. Aiden! Aiden. <laughs> Anyways. Um, uh, I think You gotta go? Yeah. Well, I thought... I have basketball trial. Yeah. I thought you said you could do this all day with me, Aiden. Not all day! I thought it would be, but we spent it, like... We spent <laughs> half an hour trying to find a place. We spent half an hour trying to find a place. That's well, right. Because we got kicked out. We, like, but came then- in, ready to, like, we came here. Like, can we record? Like, oh, no, we have a meeting here. I'm like, all right, fine. And then we go to the library pit. And then they have a meeting there, but that's where the meeting was actually going to be rather than and so here. And they just messed it up. And so we went like all over the place trying to find a quiet place. <laughs> we spent like half an hour. We contemplated breaking into rooms just so yeah. we could get a quiet space. <laughs> and then, we, and then we came back and we're like, oh, we're just going to record in the back of the library or we're just going to call it a day, right? Then we come back and this room's empty. Like, what is up? And then she greets us like, hey, uh, sorry, <laughs> we messed the rooms up. Nobody's actually in here. And we're like, ah. Oh. And so we come back. We're obviously polite. It's okay. It's okay. But like, we did so much walking. Me, like, Aiden was complaining about his <laughs> knees. <laughs> but like, is he, are you disrespecting my knee? No, I'm just saying you were complaining about them. You're disrespecting Wait, your it's knees. Three forty-one. Three forty-five. I can actually do a couple more. <laughs> Maybe I think possibly. it's. A, I think it's. We've done possibly. it for like because forty I, minutes I, now. I, I, I have basketball tryout to start at. I think uh, it's a good place to wrap it up. You know, it's not a bad place to wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's call it a day. Yeah. This is a, a lovely podcast. This is what I was thinking of when I was doing a podcast. This is like a proper like. <laughs> this is like Kieran's. Which ex- I tried doing one with Kieran, a, a, a draft one of episode or three, <laughs> but that we just talked about Ninjago for half an hour. Um, so I don't think that would have been a very good podcast to listen to. Uh, thank you for tuning into episode three of the podcast. Uh, it was the raspberry. Um, <laughs> it was the raspberry. It was the raspberry. Anyways, I'm going to see you all later. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Happy Guinness World Records Day. Adios. Happy Guinness World Records Day, everybody. Adios. Say, sing him a song, Aiden. Sing him a song. Um, I'm thinking of a song to sing. Give me a second. I don't know what a, what song to sing. I have some... How, What's your favorite song? Um, I ha- we are... Um, we are the champions? Yeah, sing some We Are the Champions, man. That's not We Are the Champions, Aiden. Aiden. We're getting a copyright strike. You can't play that, Aiden. No, just sing it, like, terribly. And, like, make up the lit. No, Aiden. I have to talk over this. You're gonna... No, Aiden. Okay, I'm stopping the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Uh, this is the number one podcast. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Aiden.